Hey guys, today we're going to do something a little different, not Tesla related. It's going to be computer related because I know a lot of you in the past have asked because you're curious about how I edit my videos and what I do. So I thought I would take the time today and show you my computer setup, give you a little tour, as well as show you some of the changes that are going to be happening. So let's dive in. All right, let's begin with the actual computer itself. This is a 2017 iMac Pro. Um, it's not fully loaded or anything like that, but it's uh, loaded enough for me to be able to do my work. And uh, a couple years ago, three years ago, I actually added this 38-inch ultra-wide monitor. And this is fantastic. For things like timelines and stuff when you're editing videos, this is amazing. So I do most of the work on this side, and then I have another screen set up in Final Cut Pro. That's the app that I use. And uh, I do the color correction on this side. Speaking of color correction... I have a dedicated keyboard just for that. This is called a Loop Deck Plus, and it's designed for things like color correction. So all these little buttons that you see on here have all been mapped in Final Cut Pro, so I can tweak all of my settings. I got a jog wheel. I can go frame by frame. I can adjust the hues and brightness. Got all these little sliders and stuff. So this is a really nice, handy little tool. Obviously, this is just a Mac keyboard, nothing fancy there. This little guy right here is a 3D mouse. I use this when I do uh, 3D modeling in Fusion 360. It's really handy to be able to uh, move your models around and show you what's going on, be able to zoom in and zoom out, move it around in 3D. If you've never used one of these and you're interested, uh, it's a really cool tool. Not terribly expensive, but boy, it sure saves a lot of time. Now this little guy right here is a recent addition. I use this for OBS. This is what we use for uh, streaming and recording the podcast. I'm still getting used to this, but this is really nice to be able to switch between scenes um, pro you know, and program different buttons. Obviously there's software on the computer that you can use to program these buttons. Like right now I have it set so it's on the desktop so I can actually twirl the knob here and I can actually control things like brightness on the computer. So that's kind of nice working late at night. And I have some shortcuts, uh, so I can go to a different screen here and I can launch things like my calculator. It opens up the calculator, so that's kind of handy. So it's a neat little tool. Uh, i got an audio interface over here. This is a Zoom H6, which is connected to my Shure microphone. So we use this for our podcast, a pair of headphones, obviously. And then over on this side here, I've got this huge USB hub. That's got like 15 different USB ports on it. This is really handy because, you know, I'm charging camera batteries and stuff. You just don't have enough USB ports, even on the back of the iMac. Speaking of which, I also have a couple of USB ports. Um, these are kind of cool. Um, they actually clip onto the bottom of the iMac. Hopefully you can see this on screen. But anyways, it has a dual SD card slot, so micro SD and a regular SD card slot, USB-A uh, and some USB-C ports. So this is kind of handy for extra ports. This one I think is dead. It's not working anymore, but anyways, they just clip out. And then over on this side, I don't use it too much. This is an 8 uh, terabyte external hard drive. And um, I just use that for, you know, basic stuff for scratch disks and stuff like that. But my master backup, primary backup, of course, is right here in the back of my computer. And it's an older... Uh, Drobo, you can see it down there. So I think that's 16 terabytes or something like that. That's used for primary backups. And secondary backups on my system are a Synology. So I have uh, in my back room, I've got a 24 terabyte Synology system, and that does all kinds of things. So it does backups. Uh, I can use it for virtualization. I use it for my Plex server and all that fun stuff. Now, this computer has served me extremely well. I bought it at the end of 2017, I think. Now, normally with me, I upgrade my computers about every year or two. But lately, uh, you know, I, I bought this one specifically so I could grow into it rather than grow out. So it's lasted me five years now. But it's time to do an upgrade. Now, speaking of upgrades, circumstances have changed. I decided about a year ago that it was probably time that when I upgraded my computer to go mobile this time around. Um, we're thinking about retiring in a few years, and I really want something that's going to be portable. Maybe I want to edit on the road and that type of thing. So obviously this iMac is just not portable. Now, I also had a 2018 MacBook Pro, and I ended up getting rid of it because I just never used it. Because it was, um, well, I just didn't find it as powerful as my iMac. But now, things have changed. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for Apple to release an M1 compatible MacBook Pro, 16 inch uh, to speak of. <clears throat> I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for Apple to release a new MacBook Pro and I really wanted the 16 inch model and I really wanted a powerful chip and Apple of course have been paying attention certainly delivered on that. So that's what I decided to do. I'm going to a 16 inch MacBook Pro and it's going to be fully loaded and that is going to be my new computer system. So Let's unpack that, and I'm going to t 
take apart my whole desk here and reorganize it because I have some new tools to go along with this. So uh, let's go through the process and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So it's finally here, my new MacBook Pro, Pro 1 Max, 16 inch. I'll tell you about the specs here in a second. But this, uh, this is a laptop I've been waiting for to get for a very long time. Now, you know, just on dimensions, yeah, it's a chunky boy. But it kind of reminds me of some of the uh, 15 inch MacBook Pros back in the day. But the heft is warranted on this because this thing has some very serious specs. But before we get into that, I want to show you some of the accessories that you get in the box. Of course, you get the usual paperwork, which nobody reads, but interestingly in here, as with all pro machines, and I can't pull it out of the bag here, but anyway, it's got some black stickers now. So that's kind of cool. Actually, the uh, iMac Pro that I had back in the day had black stickers. Now you get a 140 watt gallium nitride. Yeah, I think that's the technology. First of its kind. This supports 140 watts charging. You get a 50% charge in about 30 minutes or so on this. Uh, you have to use the MagSafe adapter, which is over here, by the way. And this is a very nice change. Uh, you know, if you remember, if you're an Apple user from back in the day, they used to have MagSafe on all of their devices. And, the, you know, for whatever reason, they took it away. But the MagSafe was actually built into the power brick. And now it's actually a separate cable altogether. So you have USB-C on one side, and then you have the MagSafe connector on the other that plugs into this side. So that way, if you ever lose your power brick, whatever, you're not without a cable and vice versa, or if this frays for whatever reason, you can get a replacement. The other nice change about this is that these cables now are all braided. Time will tell <laughs> whether this holds up over the test of time. But so far, my power bricks have actually been pretty good over the years. But uh, this is a very really nice touch, and I've actually noticed this on a quite a few new Apple products now. They're starting to put braided cables on. So it's a nice quality um, touch on that. So let's talk about specs on this thing. As I said, it's a 16-inch MacBook Pro Pro max chip, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, and four terabytes of storage. Just one shy of eight terabytes, which would make the high-end model. I don't need that much storage. It's cheaper to buy external, but I figured four terabytes should mass last me a pretty good long time. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, the screen unfortunately doesn't do it justice on, uh, on camera here, but this is an XDR display. So extended dynamic range with mini LEDs behind it. And let me tell you, if you didn't tell me that this was just an LCD or an IPS display, I would swear it's OLED. The blacks are black. It has a million to one contrast ratio and up to uh, a thousand nits of brightness or actually even more than that. It, it's truly incredible. Now you'll also notice that there is a notch at the top. Now, right now in this mode, because I normally operate in, in uh, dark mode on these computers, so I, I don't notice it all that much. And I think the internet's made a big deal about this, but. Uh, I'm told that Apple and developers are going to make some software so that this is notch aware. So if you have any issues with menus and stuff, it won't be that big of a deal. So you have a full-size keyboard with a Touch ID button here in the corner. Of course, you know, people have been asking, are they going to do Face ID on these? I, I suspect they'll probably do that next year, but I'm okay with Touch ID. Black anodized background on the keyboard, which is really quite nice. Again, full-size keyboard, and we brought the function keys back on this laptop, which is great. I never liked the touch bar. Uh, that I had on my 2018. It was, uh, I never used it. It was a pain in the butt. And of course, Apple listened and they took it away. Huge trackpads, which is a known thing on uh, Apple devices. Very nice multi touch. Uh, it's actually the best trackpads in the business. And of course, on the side, you've got uh, your usual cadre of ports. They brought back all the professional ports again. So we have HDMI, USB C, and a headphone jack. And then uh, actually, the headphone jacks over on this side. SD card slots, of course, on this side. And over here, you got your MagSafe adapter, two USB-C ports, and a headphone port. The USB-C ports are actually Thunderbolt 4. They just use the USB standard for the uh, connector, but it's Thunderbolt 4. And I got some new accessories for this thing downstairs when I go and plug it into my new setup. So that's a grand tour of the laptop. So let's go downstairs and set it up on my new system. And uh, maybe we'll run some benchmarks on this thing and just see how fast it truly is.
Well, we're all ready to be fired up for the first time. Just plugged everything in. I have a little bit of cable management to do. So here's a laptop and it plugs into this new device here. This is a Sonnet Tech Thunderbolt 4 uh, USB hub, actually. So you can see it's one single connection from the laptop into here. And that gives me USB-C out the back, Thunderbolt out the back, Ethernet, regular USB, SD card slot, another USB, headphone jacks, everything. So this is the only plug I have to plug in to power all of this stuff. And then I have, uh, you know, like I said earlier, 15 port USB hub, so everything plugs into that. Um, I mean, I am reusing my iMac Pro keyboard for the time being. The uh, iMac Pro is going to be sold, but I have a new keyboard and I actually have a new mouse coming. So, let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Purple. All right, so I have to plug in my backup drive, which is this little guy here. This is a four terabyte external SSD. Yes, sir. So four terabytes in laptop and four terabytes in my hand. So I'm going to plug that in and we'll do a data restore on that. Well, as you can see here, we have uh, some pretty big monitors. Apologize for the reflection. And you can see they're all unified, so I can move this over over here. But the big difference here is when I pull it down to this screen, as you can see here, this is, I mean, 120 hertz ProMotion, probably not coming across the screen properly because I'm filming at 24p, but in real life, that's uh, that's buttery smooth. But let's do some tests. We have Black Magic speed disk test. Let's see what happens here. Holy mackerel, look at that. Over 7 gigabytes a second in write speed and almost 6,000 on the write, or on the read. Look at that. That's a... Astonishing performance. Let's try some benchmarks. I got Cinebench. I've never used this before. Cinebench R23 is done and we're showing a multi-core result of 12,343. Very respectable. Just underneath a Ryzen Threadripper 1950. That's uh, that's quite impressive. Multi-core is where it really counts because that's all the software these days for rendering and Final Cut Pro and all that fun stuff is on there. Well, before I do my data restore, I thought I'd do a little test here. Let's select a whole bunch of apps, stuff that's not going to interfere with our screen here. So I got 40 apps selected and go to the file menu and open them all up at the same time. Are you sure you want to open 40 apps? Yeah, sure. Let's see how fast it opens 40 apps. Ready, set, go. <laughs> that's 40 apps for you folks that's how fast it opens on this thing I'm really impressed 4 terabyte drive plugged in with my backup and run migration assistant and we're just going to recover all of this data from my backup yesterday uh, yeah I'll set all this stuff up and we'll start recovering stuff wow I'm certainly impressed with this thing I mean this thing's buttery smooth I mean I've just been just <laughs> look how fast this thing is it's unbelievable. Let's do a quick render. Modify. Render all. This is 4K footage, folks. Let's see what happens. Normally Final Cut renders in the background. Yeah, that's going to take about a minute. I really like it. All right, so truth be told, I've actually edited two videos you guys have seen so far, including this one and uh, I really like the editing. It's buttery smooth. However, it hasn't been 100% smooth, all things said. I've actually had to buy a new top for my uh, for my desk here to spread out the monitors the way I had them on an angle. It just didn't work out. And second of all, I had to really spend a lot of time on this uh, new machine and update every single app. Obviously with the switch over to Apple Silicon, some of the apps uh, you know, would crash and stuff, so it just took some updates. So I spent about the last three days getting things up and going. Uh, there's a bunch of background stuff that I have to install to get my little loop decks up and running. So, so far now I think I've got it solidly working very well, so I'm very happy with the setup. Yeah, so this is my new setup. This is what I'm going to be using now to, um, to edit all the videos. So if you guys like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and uh, give me a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Is this a computer for you guys? Maybe not. I mean, if you're into Windows, that's fine too. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I might do some more videos like this in the future. We'll see. Let me know if you want to see some more stuff. Anyways, back to Tesla stuff soon. Thanks guys for watching. Bye.